So you're about to buy your first high resolution camera with its beautiful 6K or 4K sensor and you're preparing to venture out of the dull, boring, lifeless 1920 by 1080 high definition cocoon you've been trapped in for the last decade. Not so fast. There's a hidden cost that maybe you haven't factored into that purchase. I'm talking about data storage. Yeah, nobody likes the D. And the sheer amount you need to keep your beautiful 4K or 6K footage stored, safe and ready to be edited. So today, using myself as a case study, I want to talk about this hidden cost using my recent experiences shooting with the Pocket 6K Pro, how much it's cost me, how much it could cost you, and some tips on how you can somewhat affordably store your footage safely and securely. For the past two years I have been slowly and painfully moving from filming all my projects in HD to shooting in 4K or 6K when possible. My first feature film, I Survived a Zombie Holocaust, was HD. My new feature film, Older, is HD. I'm currently finishing up a documentary in HD. There is nothing wrong with HD. Higher resolution does not equal a better image. It might equal a more detailed image. It might provide you more options to crop and punch in because of that detail. But it's still not the be all and end all. Lighting, production design, location, lenses, all do a lot more for the quality of your image than shooting in 4K. Lots of clients still operate in HD. Many films you see, particularly online, are streaming in HD. You might still have an HD TV or monitor that negates the impact of that extra resolution. So if you're an HD shooter, relax. You do you, boo, and sit back and laugh at your friends spending all that extra money buying all the extra equipment and storage needed for more pixels, which, let's be honest, most people on the street will never notice anyway. However, the world is changing, and so is the industry standard for what is expected when you deliver a project. And let's be honest, you didn't buy that 6K camera to shoot in HD, did you? You wanted to wield the full might of that 6144 by 3456 sensor. A yeah, baby! But how much of a headache is high resolution to deal with? What you'll find is that filming in 6K, even using Blackmagic's highly efficient B-RAW codec, is pretty expensive when you really start to crunch the numbers. Here we have a 1TB SSD. Let's see what we get on each setting when using the full sensor. Shooting 12 to 1 constant bitrate will give you 257 minutes. This is my setting for most projects. However, if I was shooting a project for optimal image quality, I would consider 8 to 1 or 5 to 1. 8 to 1 gives you 172 minutes, and 5 to 1 gives you 107 minutes. Go up to 3 to 1 quality, and you only get 64 minutes. And if you're filming in slow motion, 50 frames per second at any of these settings, your record time is cut in half. Damn. Damn! Now if we don't shoot in B-RAW and go over to ProRes and shoot in UHD, which also uses the full readout of the sensor, ProRes HQ gives us 187 minutes. Regular ProRes gives us 280 minutes. ProRes LT gets 400 minutes. And ProRes Proxy gives us a whopping 900 minutes. I normally shoot in ProRes LT or regular ProRes when I'm looking for a higher image quality. However, remember that this is only 4K footage, not 6K. But what about some real world examples? Well, older, my second feature films, raw footage came to about four terabytes in total. That's an entire 90 minute feature film shot in HD on the Canon 5D Mark III. Stay at Home, my new 14 minute short film shot on the Ursa Mini Pro and Pocket 4K in B-RAW at eight to one, was just over three terabytes. So if you take that 14 minutes and stretch it out to 90 minutes, you're looking at 18 terabytes of raw footage minimum. I have shot an additional four terabytes of footage using the 6K Pro just in the last two months, which mainly has consisted of YouTube footage. B-roll, skits, pieces to camera, BTS, it adds up, and it adds up quick. So say you film something in 6K B-RAW 12 to one, which is the lowest quality setting. Say you film two hours of footage over the course of that day. 
that's just under 500 gig. Except, it's not really just that 500 gig. The golden rule when storing any footage is that it must be backed up in two additional places to protect yourself against corruption or data loss on one of your drives. That means that technically, you should be putting it in three different places. So what was 500 gig uh, for one day's worth of filming is now 1.5 terabytes of space for as long as you store it. Let's start off with some very basic math. The cheapest four terabyte hard drive costs around $90. That means that day one of filming, including all backups, has cost around $33. Do five days of filming and you've spent $165 just in storage. Except it's actually going to cost you more because you're going to find that editing 6K footage on cheap, slow $90 hard drives is a recipe for disaster. Back over in HD world you may well have gotten away with it, but this is 6K footage. You're in the jungle baby! You're gonna die! That means the hard drive that you're editing off has to be fast, like a solid state drive, which are much more expensive. The cheaper alternative is creating a RAID array, which is essentially a group of slower hard drives connected together to become one faster, bigger hard drive. You can still back up your footage on slow drives, but 6K footage is demanding. And if you wanna have a snappy, responsive timeline, no lag, and avoid constant crashes, you need fast hard drives to accommodate your high resolution footage. And this just in, fast hard drives are expensive. In fact, not only does your hard drive need to be fast, so does your connection to your hard drive. Those flimsy USB 3.0 speeds aren't gonna support the large amounts of information you're now moving around. As soon as you start looking for hard drives that feature fast connections to your computer, and fast disk speeds, the costs begin to climb very quickly. Looking at my filming expenses last year, one of the greatest costs was hard drive space. And that was... Before the dark times. Before the 6K. So let's look at my storage solution. Initially, I had one 16 terabyte RAID drive. I used the Akitio Thunder 3 Quad X. This is an excellent external hard drive enclosure that can hold 3.5 or 2.5 inch SATA spinning hard drives or SSDs. It has two Thunderbolt 3 ports on the back for super high speed transfer rates to your computer and it also has a display port option and it supports RAID. Inside the Akitio I had four 4 terabyte Seagate Skyhawk drives which were striped together in RAID 0 configuration. I don't want to get too technical about what different RAID configurations mean, but in very simple terms, RAID 0 provides the most speed. You are pulling each hard drive together. However, if one of those hard drives fails, because they're all pulled together, you lose all the information over every hard drive. This is the risk of RAID 0, you sacrifice safety for speed. The Skyhawk drives are affordable, reliable, but slow. 5400 RPM spinning disk drives designed for CCTV use. Using RAID 0 with them in the Thunder Quad X meant that I was getting speeds close to an SSD, and I could edit 4K footage off this array without too much issue. To back up my Akitio Quad X, I had another external hard drive, a StarTech 5-bay enclosure that I bought second hand. This thing was the Jawa sand crawlers of enclosures, a slow, ugly, lumbering machine copying over material with a sloth-like USB 3.0 connection. I use a program called Get Backup Pro to transfer footage from the Quad X to the StarTech drive at a preset schedule every evening. Because its only job is to back up my main hard drive, it doesn't have to be fast, just reliable. When I was working on projects where I wanted the most optimal speed, I would use separate solid state drives combining two 2 terabyte SSDs striped together in a small dual bay SSD enclosure. This worked well for projects under 4 terabytes in size. Any big project would always be stored using the 3 backup system straight after filming using cheap external USB drives. I would then move them on and off my RAID setup when and as I needed to work on them. This storage system worked well and then I started this YouTube channel, and shit got real. As soon as I put the Pocket 6K Pro in my pocket, 
it was clear I needed a new solution to accommodate the sheer size of the files I was now rapidly accumulating. This was it, my data day of reckoning. As much as I wanted, I couldn't put it off any longer. I had to spend money. I needed more storage space. I needed more hard drives. I just needed more. I needed everyone. What do you mean everyone? What I was looking for is a solution that would last me some time, but also make use of my existing hard drives with a sensible upgrade path. I could invest in a NAS system, but finding a NAS drive that could expand my storage and give me fast enough connections to edit from was getting very expensive, especially considering I also needed to buy extra hard drives. What I eventually went with was the OWC Thunder Bay 8, an 8 bay external hard drive with Thunderbolt ports and the same ability to hot swap drives and SSDs. Essentially, the big brother to my Akitio quad drive. The Thunder Bay 8 was 650 US dollars. I then purchased four 10 terabyte Western Digital Red drives, which came to just over 1250 US dollars. The four 10 terabyte drives replaced the four four terabyte drives in my Akitio Quad X. I changed the RAID setting from RAID 0 to RAID 5. This means that I now have redundancy. If one of my hard drives fails, I don't lose any data, I can simply replace that failed drive and rebuild the system. The trade off is that RAID 5 is slower and that my 40 terabytes of storage is actually only 30 terabytes of usable space. But because these hard drives are 7200 RPM and the old 4TB Skyhawks were only 5400 RPM, the new Western Digital Red hard drives individually are fast enough to make up for the difference in changing my RAID settings. And I will now get similar or in fact slightly faster speeds. My old Skyhawk 4TB hard drives move to the new Thunder Bay 8. I also add the four backup hard drives from the StarTech enclosure. This gives me eight four terabyte drives using RAID 5. I combine them together to get 28 terabytes of usable footage, and my data is protected should one of those drives fail. But what about offsite backup? I hear you ask. Well, let's uh, take a look at backing up my 14 terabytes of content to the cloud, and then adding, say, a terabyte a month from then on. Hmm, $1,200. That sounds like monetized savage filmmaker problems, not unmonetized savage filmmaker problems. And what if my house burns down before being monetized, I hear you ask? Well, that's just a risk I'm going to have to take. I'm sure I won't dwell on it constantly and be reminded of it every waking moment until it consumes my thoughts entirely and I'm unable to find any sense of peace or respite from the impending sense of dread brought about by this omission. And look, on the bright side, through this transition, I've doubled my amount of storage space. I've increased the speed of my drives, I've added redundancy for drive failure for both setups, and all it cost me was close to $2,000. $2,000. $2,000. Imagine what I could do with $2,000. I could buy another Pocket 6K, a beautiful new lens, maybe two. I could get an Aperture Nova light, a new computer, even pay off my credit cards. Well, one of them anyway. But I can't. All these options are lost, like tears in the rain. All because I decided to shoot in high resolutions. It's just space. I just paid for space. Space I can't see or touch or will ever notice except for the annoying, loud whirring of 12 hard drives spinning underneath my desk that will haunt my dreams. And this will be your future. So next time your client asks for a 4K or 6K project, or you think B-RAW 6K 3 to 1 sounds like a good idea, remember this video, remember my story, and beware. I hope you've enjoyed this video or found it helpful. Please consider giving it a like and subscribing. And if you'd like to support this channel, check out the link in the description to watch my new feature film, Older, available free on Amazon Prime and Tubi. If you dig it, maybe consider giving it a review. Got a question about storage solutions for your camera? Chuck it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. As always, I am the Savage Filmmaker, and I'll catch you on the next one.